Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand, place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Hear the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God the Father and our risen Savior Jesus. Amen. <coughs> Doubting Thomas, as he is best known because of today's gospel story, was no different than the other disciples. Yet for some, he is an example of doubt and hesitancy when it comes to faith. Some people may think less of him because of his refusal to believe the others when they came and told him about seeing Jesus. A few think of him only in light of this particular story. They forget that earlier when Jesus told the disciples it was time to go to Jerusalem and face his destiny, Thomas was the one who spoke up. Let us also go, that we may die with him. Yes, Thomas was a doubter, but you know what? A quick look at all the Easter accounts paints a very similar picture of the rest of the apostolic band as being no better. St. Mark tells us that Mary Magdalene went to the disciples after her encounter with the risen Jesus. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. St. Luke tells us a whole committee of women tried to get the disciples to listen to their report, but these words seemed to them as an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Of course, St. John's account records a foot race between Peter and the one whom Jesus loved. Now that other disciple looked into the empty tomb, but he waited on Peter, who went into the tomb, he saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. But for yet, as for yet, they did not understand the scriptures that he must rise from the dead. And when Jesus finally does appear to his disciples, Mark records that he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. While Luke goes on to tell us that at, when he appeared, they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. Today's gospel, John tells us that it was only after he showed them his hands and his side that the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And then it goes on to say, Now Thomas, called, one of the twelve called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. Thomas wasn't in the upper room with the others when Jesus came to them. Maybe he was just off alone in his thoughts, choosing to mourn and weep in private. Maybe he didn't get the text. Everyone thought someone else had called him about the meeting. Makes no difference. The point is, is that he was not present when Jesus first showed himself to the others. Thus, when they told him about seeing Jesus resurrected, he responds to them the same way they had responded to all the others who initially had seen Jesus. And he replies to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. See, Thomas was no different than the others. Seeing is believing. And event, evidently, Galilee must have been the show-me state of Judea. And yet for Thomas, seeing was believing. Because we read on. Then Jesus said to Thomas, okay, put your finger here. See my hand. Put out your hand. Place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Hmm. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And see, Thomas didn't actually have to touch Jesus, did he? 
just seeing him was enough. While he had doubted what everyone had told him, seeing the risen Jesus was all the proof he needed. Do not disbelieve, but believe was the Lord's challenge to him. Do not disbelieve, but believe is still the Lord's challenge to his people today. And it's so easy to believe when everything's all fine and dandy. It's not so easy when things aren't going so well. In his mourning and his pondering over Jesus' death, Thomas had allowed his mind to, to wander all over all of his choices, to dwell on whether it had been a waste of time following a great teacher and miracle worker but fa who faced a horrific end. What was he thinking? What kinds of whispers and thoughts and regrets had Satan placed into his mind? I mean, couldn't he see the joy in the others' faces when they told him, we've seen Jesus, he's alive, he was raised from death in the grave just like he told us he would. Unless I see it for myself, won't believe. Notice, Thomas doesn't say, I can't believe this, or I'm just having a little trouble grasping this. No, he's quoted as saying, unless I see his, in his hands the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. It wasn't about his unbelief, which would have been so similar to the others when they were first told about Jesus. It was about his disbelief. It wasn't that he couldn't believe. It was that he would not believe. Now his tune changes when Jesus does appear, but prior to seeing Jesus for himself, he makes the choice not to believe the reports. Well, Jesus challenges us all. Do not disbelieve, but believe. In fact, actually the ver verbs are rendered in the Greek as participles, which are ongoing actions. Don't be disbelieving, but be believing. The Lord is talking about living in faith. You and I have not yet seen the Lord, and yet we're still called to believe anyway. Well, that's faith. Hebrew 11 informs us that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And the key to faith is the working of the Holy Spirit. Even as Luther teaches us in his small catechism, he says, I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. God sends his Holy Spirit to us through the word and sacraments, to give and to grow and to empower saving faith in our hearts so that we can believe in Jesus Christ. We believe and we trust in the risen Savior because of the gracious workings of our God. It was the Spirit who came upon the disciples, who took that sniveling group of cowards, locked in a room out of their fear, and got them out into the public places where they were proclaiming Jesus, where they were willing to suffer for him. In fact, in Acts, we're told, and every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. And that same spirit comes to us. He is the one who speaks to our hearts and minds through the word, who nourishes and empowers us through the sacraments. Do not disbelieve, but believe, Jesus says. And he sends his Holy Spirit so that the righteous man will live by his faith. Thomas believed because he, like the rest, got to see the resurrected Jesus. Ah, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is critical for us to understand. It is by faith in Jesus as our Lord and our Savior that we are saved from sin, death, and hell. The Bible is quite clear in its testimony. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. 
The Apostle Paul states much the same thing when he writes to the Romans. It is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. St. Peter writes to the early church and says in today's epistle, Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And just look at how John ends this chapter of his gospel. He writes, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The gift of God's word and the testimony of the scriptures passed down through the millennia is God's gift for us and for our salvation. That's why we obey the commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Understanding that we should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching in his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. We're blessed not because of what we do for him, but because of what God does for us in Jesus. So do not disbelieve, but believe. And rejoice over the grace of God that is found only in our Lord Jesus Christ to whom be all honor, glory, and praise. And all God's people said, Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.